Today on Ortho 2 we are going to be talking about one of the most famous dinosaurs of all time, the legendary Velociraptor. Velociraptor was a genus of dromaeosaurid theropod dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous. Originally exposed to the world as a big scaly lizard, this animal has turned into an important example of how our perceptions of extinct animals can change drastically over time. So before we talk about how amazing this animal was, let's talk about its evolution first. Velociraptor was a raptor, or in scientific terms, a dromaeosaur. The name dromaeosaur actually means running lizard because of the mobility these animals are thought to have had. Typically they were of small to medium size, carnivorous, and possibly very bird-like. Dromaeosaurs first appeared 168 million years ago in the mid-Jurassic period. The first dromaeosaurs were very small at only about 3 feet in length. Sinornithorus is an example of one of these early raptors. Early dromaeosaurs were actually more bird-like than later ones. The relationship between birds and dromaeosaurids is complicated and not settled on. I will eventually cover this topic in a whole separate video. Though similar to birds, this group was much different. It is unlikely that any dromaeosaurid could fly, but some may have been able to glide. Regardless, they were limited to the ground or to the trees. Some of the most dominant carnivores of all time lived alongside them, and for this reason and others, staying small was advantageous. The family was diverse in size and niche, and not all dromaeosaurs were small. All dromaeosaurs, as far as we know, did have feathers, and not just a few on their heads. They were almost completely covered in feathers except for areas like the face, feet, and hands. To us, they would resemble giant birds, and they may have been very bird-like in behavior. Dromaeosaurid fossils have been found across the globe, in North America, Europe, Africa, Asia, South America, and Antarctica, with fossilized teeth giving credence to the possibility that they also inhabited Australia. Velociraptor belonged to the subfamily Velociraptorinae. The taxonomy of this group is confusing and hotly debated. Some think Deinonychus belongs to this subfamily while others do not. A cladogram from Jasinski et al. 2020 puts Dynia bellator and Tisagan in the subfamily while Deinonychus, Utahraptor, and others are excluded. Velociraptor itself was a very interesting genus. Velociraptor means swift plunderer in regards to its agility and carnivorous diet. There are currently two species of Velociraptor, Mongolianensis and Osmolske. Velociraptor was fairly small for its family and especially small compared to the other animals of its time. They grew up to 15 kilograms or 33 pounds. A lot of modern day birds are actually around this size. I have seen people compare its size to that of a turkey, but they were a little heavier than that. A more accurate comparison would be the Andean condor, the largest bird of prey. The largest of these animals weigh 15 kilograms or 33 pounds, so the same weight. But of course this comparison is only for weight. They are two very different animals. Despite being very light, they were 6.8 feet or 2 meters in length. Velociraptors had a long body and they were also relatively tall. They were about 20 inches or half a meter tall. To put that into perspective, most medium to large dogs such as labs are about 24 inches tall. So just because they are small, if one were to approach you, you would likely be scared. With feathers, they would have appeared larger than they are as well. Hell, I am scared of geese despite knowing I could absolutely crush one. And just look at this picture of people holding the similar sized Andean condor. Velociraptors have a reputation of being very deadly, and this is for a reason. Everyone is so caught up with the idea of razor-sharp Velociraptor claws that they forget their main weapon was the same as almost all carnivores, their teeth. The jaws were lined with 26 to 28 widely spaced teeth on each side, each more strongly serrated on the back edge than the one in front. 
They would chomp down on their prey and pull their teeth through flesh as massive wounds left their prey bleeding out. This is called the puncture and pull feeding method. It is supported by studies of not only Velociraptor but other related species and other species with similar teeth. Parallel scratches form while they bite down into prey, followed by oblique scratches as the head is pulled backwards with the jaws closed. It is chilling to think about this animal sliding its teeth through prey. Though weighing so little, its bite was enough to take down much larger prey. The study also found that dromaeosaur teeth were particularly good at handling struggling prey. They could bite prey in weird angles without endangering their teeth. Though their teeth did the actual killing, their hand claws are what actually got the prey into their mouth. It is unrealistic to think their hands had knives attached to them. In reality, they were used for gripping prey. I don't want to apply an inaccurate analogy, but the hand claws of these animals may have been somewhat like we see in big cats. Their claws are primarily used for catching prey and fighting. A lion won't kill a buffalo with one hard swipe of its hand, but it can grab onto the prey and kill it with its jaws. Velociraptor was much of the same way. It didn't repeatedly swipe its prey, it grabbed on and made sure it didn't get away. Velociraptor, like other dromaeosaurids, had hands with three claws, which were similar in construction and flexibility to the wing bones of modern birds. The structure of the wrist bones prevented pronation of the wrist and forced the hands to be held with the palm facing inward, not downward. So sorry Jurassic Park, their hands were not like this. They faced inward like this. And this is because they didn't slash in a downward motion. They grasped together and essentially hugged prey. You know what else wasn't a giant knife attached to their limbs? Their toe claws. Its toe claws were used differently than the hands, but sort of in the same way. It was once thought that their giant toe claws would disembowel their prey. A few quick kicks and then guts would be on the floor. The consensus has shifted away from this theory and it is now thought that they are also used more for gripping prey. The first digit of the foot, as in other theropods, was a small dew claw. However, whereas most theropods had feet with three digits contacting the ground, Chromiosaurids like Velociraptor walked on only their third and fourth digits. The second digit for Velociraptor was a famous killing claw. It was highly modified and held retracted off the ground. It bore a relatively large sickle-shaped claw, typical of Chromiosaurid and Truodontid dinosaurs. This enlarged claw could grow to over 6.5 centimeters or 2.5 inches long. It was most likely a predatory device used to tear into or restrain struggling prey. Raptor prey restraint is a technique we theorize this group would use. Living raptors such as hawks and other birds of prey pin their game to the ground while they eat them alive. Using this involves choosing an animal that is smaller than them. This makes it easy to hold them down and dominate them. It is thought that dromaeosaur foot claws were used for the same purpose. It would also explain a function of the feathers on their arms. Just like modern birds, they would flap their wings to stay balanced. I should mention that the feet and hand claws would still have done damage to the prey. Especially the large species of dromaeosaur would have enough force to pierce the skin. Though their teeth were their best weapon, their claws were instrumental in actually catching and finishing the prey. A study done comparing the arc of dromaeosaurid claws to extant animals found that most dromaeosaurs were able to climb trees and perch like modern birds. The Velociraptor claw possessed an arc measurement of 127 degrees. With a 10-15% to 15 increase with a keratin sheath, the claw falls within the range of claws used for perching and trunk climbing. This is solid empirical evidence that dromaeosaurids, including Velociraptor, could and did climb trees. Being able to climb trees is a great trait. Perhaps there could be comparisons to how leopard climbs trees to not only hunt, but also to eat their prey in peace. In the Cretaceous, being able to eat your prey in peace may have been important to say the least. So what did Velociraptor actually eat? We know it was deadly, but it was tiny in the time of giants. Fortunately, we have the single greatest fossil ever discovered in my opinion. 
The fighting dinosaur specimen found in 1971 preserves a Velociraptor and Protoceratops in combat and provides direct evidence of predatory behavior. The two animals died in combat, buried by either a collapsing sand dune or a sandstorm. Parts of the Protoceratops are missing, which has been seen as evidence of scavenging by other animals. The scleral rings of Velociraptor, Protoceratops, and modern birds and reptiles indicates that Velociraptor may have been nocturnal, while Protoceratops may have been cathomeral, active throughout the day during short intervals, suggesting that the fight may have occurred at twilight or during low-light conditions. In the fighting dinosaur specimen, the Velociraptor lies underneath, with one of its sickle claws apparently embedded in the throat of its prey while the beak of Protoceratops is clamped down upon the right forelimb of its attacker. This suggests that Velociraptor may have used its sickle claw to pierce vital organs of the throat. But this is an unusual fossil. The arm of Velociraptor was stuck. Its only choice was to try to kick off to get away. It didn't intentionally get its arm stuck, so I don't think this is evidence that they would purposely get their foot claw in the neck as their main attack strategy. It did not only prey on other dinosaurs, it would have been too risky to prey on Protoceratops as seen in the previous example. David Hone, a paleontologist at Queen Mary University of London said, It spent the vast majority of its time eating small things, which likely included reptiles, amphibians, insects, small dinosaurs, and mammals. Many small to medium carnivores in the modern day spend most of their time eating small things and occasionally take on a deer or large game. Everyone loves the smart Velociraptors from Jurassic Park, but were they really smart? The size of Velociraptor's brain in proportion to its body is relatively high compared to most reptiles, including most other dinosaurs, so it seems likely it was comparatively clever. It would be inaccurate to compare them to intelligence of let's say a crow, but they were not dumb for their time. But maybe in the modern day they wouldn't be considered the brightest. Remains of Deinonychus, a closely related dromaeosaurid, have commonly been found in aggregations of several individuals. The only solid evidence for social behavior of any kind among dromaeosaurids comes from a Chinese trackway which shows six individuals of a large species moving as a group. Although many isolated fossils of Velociraptor have been found in Mongolia, none were closely associated with other individuals. Therefore, while Velociraptor is commonly depicted as a pack hunter as in Jurassic Park, there is only limited evidence to support this theory from dromaeosaurids in general and none specific to Velociraptor itself. I also want to say since I am mentioning Jurassic Park, in the movie they kind of based the actual dinosaur on Deinonychus, not Velociraptor, but they still went with the name Velociraptor so that's why it's relevant for this video. In 2010, Hone and colleagues published a paper on their 2008 discovery of shed velociraptor teeth on a late-stage carcass of Protoceratops. This suggests that the velociraptor scavenged some of its food. Most carnivores and even some herbivores will not pass up on a free meal, so there is no surprise here. It does tell us that Protoceratops was perhaps a large part of the diet of Velociraptor. In 2012, Hone and colleagues published a paper that describes a Velociraptor specimen with a long bone of an Azdark and pterosaur in its gut. This was also interpreted as showing scavenging behavior. Velociraptor was warm-blooded to some degree, as it required a significant amount of energy to hunt. Modern animals that possess feathery coverings or coats like Velociraptor did tend to be warm-blooded since these coverings function as insulation. However, bone growth rates in dromaeosaurids and some early birds suggest a more moderate metabolism. The kiwi is similar to dromaeosaurids in anatomy, feather type, bone structure, and even narrow anatomy of the nasal passages. The kiwi is a highly active, specialized, flightless bird with a stable body temperature and a fairly low resting metabolic rate, making it a good model for metabolism of primitive birds and dromaeosaurids. Fossils of dromaeosaurids more primitive than Velociraptor are known to have feathers covering their bodies and fully developed wings. The fact that the ancestors of Velociraptor were feathered and possibly capable of flight had long suggested to paleontologists that Velociraptor bore feathers as well, since even flightless birds today retain most of their feathers. 
In 2007, researchers found quill knobs on the forearm of a velociraptor found in Mongolia. These bumps on bird wing bones show us where feathers anchor, and their presence on Velociraptor indicate that it too had feathers. According to paleontologist Alan Turner, a lack of quill knobs does not necessarily mean that a dinosaur did not have feathers. Finding quill knobs on Velociraptor, though, means that they definitely had feathers. This is something that we'd long suspected, but no one had been able to prove. Co-author Mark Norell also said, the more we learn about these animals, the more we find out that there is basically no difference between birds and their closely related dinosaur ancestors like Velociraptor. Both have wishbones, brooded their nests, possess hollow bones, and are covered in feathers. If animals like Velociraptor were alive today, our first impression would be that they are just very unusual looking birds. It's amazing to think that some dinosaurs would have not looked all so weird. After all, birds are technically avian dinosaurs, and I wish more people knew this. Here's my favorite depiction of a velociraptor, so bird-like. You should check this guy out, he makes a bunch of great realistic depictions of prehistoric animals. Quill knobs are not found in all prehistoric birds, and their absence does not mean that an animal was not feathered. Flamingos, for example, have no quill knobs. Interestingly, the presence of quill knobs confirms that Velociraptor bore modern-style wing feathers, with arachis and vein formed by barbs. Based on the spacing of six preserved knobs in this specimen, the authors suggested that Velociraptor bore 14 secondaries which are wing feathers stemming from the forearm. Compared with 12 or more in Archaeopteryx, 18 in Microraptor, and 10 in Rahanavis. The feathers of the flightless Velociraptor may have been used for a variety of reasons. Feathers protect and insulate animals from the world around them. Heat, cold, rain, or snow. In that regard, they are similar to hair. But feathers are typically more creative than hair. Many modern birds use their feathers for elaborate displays. It is not crazy to assume a Velociraptor has some unique feathers. Another often overlooked aspect of feathers is for covering nests while brooding. We know that some dinosaurs like oviraptors sat on their eggs just like how modern birds did. Another possible function that has gained traction in the past couple of years is wing-assisted incline running. Wing-assisted incline running is seen in a wide array of modern birds such as turkeys and other galliforms to climb trees. It is thought many dromaeosaurs and other flightless birds may have climbed trees or other incline surfaces by running on their claws and flapping their wings for an extra boost. This theory is often cited in the origins of flight in birds. The feathers of Velociraptor were used for many purposes, just as they are in modern birds. All known specimens of Velociraptor mongoliensis were discovered in Dejadota Formation in Mongolian province of Omnigovi. I probably butchered that pronunciation. Species of Velociraptor have also been found in the slightly younger Baran Goyat Formation of Mongolia. These geologic formations are estimated to date back to the Campanian stage between 83 and 70 million years ago of the late Cretaceous epoch. All of the fossil sites that have yielded Velociraptor remains preserve an arid environment with fields of sand dunes and only intermittent streams. A posture of some complete fossils as well as the mode of preservation most show within structureless sandstone deposits may show that a number of specimens were buried alive during sandstorm events common to their environments. Velociraptors disappeared from the fossil record 70 million years ago. A few million years later, the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. I haven't been able to find anything about why they disappeared or if they went extinct before the KPG mass extinction, but I guess it doesn't really matter because they would die out anyways. I love these animals. Though not so giant raptors from Jurassic Park, they show us that animals of the past are not always so alien looking. Velociraptor would have looked like a strange eagle that decided to walk instead of flying. I hope you guys like learning about one of the most famous dinosaurs of all time, and I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe. I have plenty of other videos just like this, and I'm sure you would like it. And remember, new videos every Thursday. I'll see you on the next episode of North 02. See ya.